out of that pool before he drowned is beyond me except for the grace of God. But my friends, one moment you're all right and the next moment things are not the same. They change quickly. You better get ready and realize that God's the last, God's the sustainer, and God's the caretaker. He takes care of it. A highway is prepared, it says here. Going back to that day of Israel, there in Babylonian captivity, he's talking about God opening those gates in Babylon, allowing his people to go home, and they're told to clean up the highway, to clear out the rocks and everything that would hinder them so that they can move back as a people to Jerusalem and inhabit the city of God again. That's the Old Testament part of it. The New Testament part of it is that God is preparing a way for us to get to heaven. And there are heralds who have a message to herald, and they cannot stop, nor should they rest. They need to keep preaching that message, keep heralding that message, so that people will be brought to the place of redemption, so that they can know God and be brought back to God because they've gone away. Listen, you go back to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. I had that part. I see my marker go somewhere. Oh, well, we're going to read two passages. One is found in Isaiah 44. I'll just read it first. I'm already there. Isaiah 44. And then we'll go to 11. To make the difference where you read it, it's there. Isaiah 44, verse 22. That's not right. And I double check this too. Mark it. Look at the scripture. Look for it. That will look right. He said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. Yes, it is the right word. And as a cloud thy sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. This is what God says I'm going to do for you. I've blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. I've washed and cleansed them, and they are removed as a cloud thy sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. Going back to Isaiah 11, verse 16. Isaiah 11, 16. He said, And there should be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Go back to Isaiah again in this chapter 11. And I want to read verses 10 through 12. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign or sign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand upon the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left, and from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathos, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea, and he shall set up an ensign or sign for the nation and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of, of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Do you know that's happening today? Do you know that if you watch enough TV, you'll see a commercial somewhere along the line that says, we are trying to help Israelites get home. Jews, get home. Will you send us an offering? So much money will get so many Jews home. They all want to go home. They all want to go back to Jerusalem. They all want to go back to that homeland. Why would anyone want to go back where there's war? It's God calling them. It's God's purpose. It's God's will. And they're going to go one way or the other. They're going to return because God said they returned. And He said He would take them back. And I'm telling you, God is calling people here today because He's calling out a people among the Gentile race of people to know Him and to believe in Him. But we've got to hear that call, that homeward call. Do you hear His call to return? 
to come to Him as the Savior, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, to surrender to His will for your life, to understand that this is a, not just a service where you come and some fellow stands up or some choir sings a song or somebody gives a testimony or some Bible class takes place. More, it's more than that. This is a heart-rendering service that should change our lives. Church is not a joke. It's real. Hell is no joke. It is real. Heaven is a fatal to all. To all. Because Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood and died on the cross of Calvary. We all can be born again and you will not enter the kingdom of God if you have not been born again. You will not even see the kingdom of God if you have not been born again. Read John chapter 3. This is where we go. He speaks of our approaching salvation. Not the salvation that we have right now of our salvation from this sinful world. He's not talking about, when he talks about all of this here, he's gathering his people, putting them back in Jerusalem. He's talking about Jesus coming again and establishing his kingdom. He's talking about the end. He's talking about a time when we will have this world no more because he's going to create a new one for us. I want you to be ready for he speaks of an approaching salvation, the return of Jesus, His second coming. For we are redeemed by Him, sanctified by Him. He is coming. Oh, listen, every morning this week, we got up to some leader over in North Korea and said, I'm fixing to shoot a missile over there. I'm going to shoot a missile over there. Then he changed his tune. He said, I'm going to shoot it over at Guam. That's a state of the United States. You know, it belongs to us. Matter of fact, that's all it is a military base. It's about, uh, what, several hundred thousand, eight hundred, some thousand people there. I think they told us on TV. And, and, and everyone who's heard that and heard that, every one of y'all been fearing and frightened over it. That guy ain't going to do anything God don't let him do. Should I say it again? That king. That ruler in North Korea will not be able to do anything that God does not allow him to do. And if he allows him to shoot a missile and a war starts, which might be World War III, I believe you describe it in the Bible in Revelation, it's going to happen, it's going to come to pass. God's already told us that. All we need to be good is looking up for his return. Amen. Looking for Jesus because he's coming back. Quit worrying about what the world and believe the word of God who tells us he'll take care of us. He's our sustainer. To a land of peace and comfort and rest. It's called Hepsa. My delight. God's delight. Is in her. The land of Beulah. Means married. God's married to her. One day God will perform a wedding. And he will be married to his bride. Who's the bride? Where's the church? He's going to be married to his bride. Oh, what a day. Oh, what a day. No wonder it's Beulah land. No wonder we ought to be able to sing with James. And I'm longing for her. It means we're longing to be with our Savior. That we're longing to be in his with Him where He is preparing a place for us. The world is a land of strife, of war, of pain, of misery, of hurt, of unrest, of, of desolation, of death, of sorrow, of weeping. But wait, wait! This is not our home. Thank you. <laughs> Sound like a good place to <laughs> This is not our eternity. 
For God has prepared us a place. In John 14, 1 through 4, he tells us that. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. If I come again, that you may be where I'm at. He has provided a way, which he says he is the only way. John 14, verse 6. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man can love the Father but by me. I care what everybody else is preaching, but if they're not preaching Jesus Christ is the way, they're not preaching the truth. In this place, and I want to go to that Revelation right quick, maybe before the storm takes all the power away. Revelation 21. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he would dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, or sorrow, or crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things pass away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. That's what God's going to do. Man can't do anything to you. God can. God can. God can put this soul in hell. And God can put this soul in hell. And it's all based upon what we do in this son. What you do, your opportunity. You know, a place where he says in chapter 22 and verse 3, I know this is a sin cursed world. I know there are sinners in this world. You know why I know? Because I have one. Because I'm one. I'm a sinner. I'm under that curse. I, I still have to deal with that. But listen, God says this to me in verse 3 of chapter 22. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve. God's going to do away with the curse. He's going to make this earth. I don't think that he's going to just annihilate this world. I think he's going to purge it. We may live back here. But it's not going to be this world. Because this world, what we know of this life and this world, they're gone because he's going to purge it, cleanse it, and he's going to make it new. And it will have no curse. A place of no more curse. A place where we shall see the Savior. Look at verse 4. Same chapter 22. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. We're going to see Jesus. I hear a lot of people talk about, I can't wait to get to heaven so I can see so and so and so and so. I can't wait to get to heaven so I can see Jesus. Right. I mean, those other people, we got plenty of time to see them because they're going to be there with us for all eternity. But I want to see him. I want to see the one that gives me the hope I have in my heart and soul today. They, these are faithful and true. God says these words. So he says, Harold, broadcast them. So uh, then as John calls, shall we not say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Should we not say that? Come. Revelation 22, 20. We have a purpose for living and work to do we have a place, as the song says, I'm longing for you. Mary is your hope. Here in this world, I pray for you. I pray for you because this world offers no hope. Will you not hear God's still small voice calling? Come to me and rest. Come unto me. Come to know him. As your Lord, your Savior, come and live eternally with 
God. In this day of unrest, in this day of nations living up as preparing for war, why in the world would we build a bomb that could destroy everybody anyway unless we're preparing for war? Listen, that doesn't shouldn't bother us because God's in control. Hear me. I say Jesus is coming. I just ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? He said two other thoughts, and I'm going to close. Probably should have closed a while ago, but sorry. Woe to the proud. Ones who defy him. Woe to the wicked, those who deny him. Woe to the wicked. Woe. <clears throat> Lo, he comes with clouds descending. When thou, my righteous judge, shalt cry. Great God, what do I see and what do I hear? The Lord shall come. The earth. Jesus is coming. Are you Promises. As he talks to a nation about the God. You know something? Only God can do it. And we can't stop it.